I'm Byron Brown. Thank you for joining us for this June 23rd edition of Insight. The White House is making sure that even red states hear the pitch for President Joe Biden's achievements in office and the case for his re-election. It's unlikely that last week's visit by the Secretary of Transportation will sway majority opinions in Republican-led Mississippi. Still, Pete Buttigieg's visit to the Delta and the Jackson vicinity came with plenty of cheerleading for Biden policies that benefit the Magnolia State. The secretary joined Mississippi Congressman Benny Thompson in Jackson and Richland Friday. They toured the Megar Evers Home Museum and broke ground on their rebuilding Megar Evers Boulevard project. They also met with truckers to talk about improvements in safety and working conditions for America's long haul drivers. Thursday, they were in the Delta port of Rosedale to tour improvements funded by the Bipartisan Infrastructure Act. 12 News' senior political correspondent Richard Lake talked with Pete Buttigieg in the capital city. 21st in Mississippi, and that 60 years ago today, something terrible happened in Philadelphia that uh, cried out for justice for decades, but also helped to focus America's attention on what had to change. And as we bear the moral weight of our inheritance, it feels a little bit strange to be talking about streetlights uh, and ports and highway funding and some of the other day-to-day -day transportation needs that we are here to do something about. And yet, part of why we are doing this work is that we know that even the most superficial examination of the legacy of the civil rights movement reminds us of the relationship between transportation and equality. And the fact that equitable transportation has always been one of the core commitments and for that reason has also always been one of the most important battlegrounds of the struggle for racial and economic justice and civil rights in this country. Homer Plessy sat in the white car of the East Louisiana Railroad. Medgar Evers called for a boycott of gas stations that wouldn't allow black customers to use their facilities. Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat, of course, to a white man on a Montgomery bus. Transportation is so elemental to all of our lives that disparities in access to transportation affect everything else. Education, economic opportunity, quality of life, safety. And when access to transportation is not equitable, the consequences penetrate into every aspect of the lives of people and families and neighborhoods. And the reality is that here in Jackson, decades of underinvestment and disinvestment in this city's infrastructure have been felt most acutely by black communities. Poorly maintained roads and sidewalks, public transit stops not clearly marked or without sufficient seats for waiting or shelter from the weather, made it harder for people to move about their days and added time or distance to that basic daily rhythm of life, getting to school, getting to work, buying groceries, going to the doctor. People's lives were made more difficult one commute or one day at a time in ways that add up enormously over time. We're here to do something about that. Naming these facts and facing these disparities is not something that this administration has taken on as an exercise in guilt and blame or out of interest in dwelling on the past. Rather, it is the awareness that naming these harms and understanding our inheritance is a first step toward making things better. And in this administration, we're doing a lot more than just acknowledging our inheritance. We are taking action to build and rebuild our infrastructure so that it serves all people fairly and equitably. That's why we are here. And that's why, on behalf of the Biden-Harris administration, I'm honored to be here to celebrate the $20 million award for the Medgar Evers Boulevard Project. You know, you, you can't escape, uh, when, when you look at the civil rights mo movement, you can't escape how much of that struggle was about access to transportation, bus boycotts, uh, segregated uh, facilities. And it's a reminder that one of the most basic things that everybody needs is access to transportation. That includes the condition of the roads. And the condition of the roads in Jackson suffered from disinvestment over decades. We're here to help fix that. And it's part of why we're working directly with communities, as we are with this $20 million, to get a project like this done. 
talk to me about what you saw in South Jackson specifically, in the broader Jackson Metro. What stood out to you as you know what infrastructure should yeah. look like as a mayor? Talk about it. What we see here is a lot of need, and we are here to help meet that need with historic federal funding. Uh, it's part of what Representative Thompson uh, supported with that infrastructure package, a big priority for President Biden. And it's one thing to see numbers on a page in Washington, D.C. It's another to be among people who are going to count on these roads and bridges and everything else that we're improving.